The Digi S110 is a price computing and printing scale which is available in four variations. The main difference between the variations is the display type. The SM110 Plus and the SM110 Economy. The SM110 Economy has a single line display which displays the product name for 3 seconds. The name then switches to the unit price and weight. These are available in the pole and bench versions. The SM110 Plus type has a full display to show all information at the same time, unlike the Eco version. The Plus type retails at a higher price as it has a larger display to show the product name and price simultaneously. The SM110's ideal use would be in a retail environment where price computing and barcoding solution is needed when serving a customer fresh or unpackaged products. The scale provides the price information for the user and customer. Thereafter, a label may be printed with the price and barcode. The scale is able to be used as a standalone or on a local network where the unit prices may be downloaded to the scale from the back office or DigiConnect software. The scale is great for merchandising. On the side of the scale, you will find useful information ranging from your model number, serial number, the min and max weight, the maximum tear values, and your incremental values, what the scale goes up in, in two or five gram increments, and then your SA approval number. Some functionality and benefits of the scale. The maximum capacity is 15 kilograms with increments of five grams. It can hold up to 10,000 PLUs and 1,000 ingredients. Supports multiple label format printing. 45 fixed formats depending on your label size and 20 customized format designs. The SM110 has a maximum capacity of 15 kilograms and goes up in a 5 gram increments. The SM110 can hold up to 10,000 PLUs and 1,000 ingredients. It also supports multiple label format printing with 45 fixed formats depending on your label size and 20 customized format designs. It has a high speed thermal printer. Next, I will show you how to insert labels. Open the flap on the side. There's a little lever to open and close your thermal head, which you will open. Then just grab the cassette and just pull it out gently. This is what your cassette looks like on the inside. You will have this stop. You just turn it to the side and pull it off and then your label break as well. Next step to inserting your labels is to prep your roll of labels. Next step to inserting the labels, you take your roll of labels, just make sure there's a little piece rolled off, put it over, and put it in between the two metal bars and the plastic guide. Then from that side, roll it through that gap and then bring it around to your marketory reel. All you do is clip this one on and same with the other one. Just put it in the middle with the guides and there your labels are set. Now putting your labels back into the scale. Firstly, please make sure you set your guides, the label guides, to the, so that your label just fits in, so it guides the label back in. And then, as you would, just slide the cassette back into the, into the machine and close your thermal head. And that concludes putting in your labels. SM110 from the front. This is your keyboard loom that you plug into your keyboard. This is your comms board where your Ethernet, RS-232 and cash draw, which is a RJ-12, would plug into. This is your power switch. You see your fuse and your power switch over there that feeds into your power supply. This is your power supply. Then you have a cable running from your power supply into the bottom of your main board that plugs in there to give it power. Then you have your 80 board, which converts your weight to something that a human can read. 
this is the load cell. This is the SM110 power supply. Uh, common power supply issues you might have is as soon as you print a label the scale would only print half a label and then switch all itself off uh, that means that the, the power supply is not supplying enough power to all the components uh, the other thing you can check underneath by the power switch there is a fuse box there so you can check if your fuse has not blown that would also give power issues this is the load cell. It's a 30 kg uh, rated load cell, but it only goes up to for 15 for this specific scale. If you do receive or you do get um, uh, weighing issues, you can check if you open the scale to see if there are no cables actually touching the load cell, because that would also uh, affect your weighing, your weighing accuracy. And just to check in general if there's no obstructions or anything on the load cell. Uh, this is the 80 board that connects your load cell to your scale. So it comes, there's a cable running from the load cell, goes, gets soldered onto the, the 80 board. And then from the 80 board, there's a cable that goes into your main board that converts your, basically gets your converted data to show you what is actually weighing on the scale. Common issues with this uh cables that break off um that gives you weird uh, readings that will run up and down or no reading at all um it's not a component that gives too much too many issues or so but if you do have weight issues it's something you can look at uh, on this thing you can also connect external load cells if you do want to go over the, the 15 kgs you want to go to maybe a platform scale of a ton or so that scale is also capable of doing this uh, the next part will be your sensors that sensor over there is your gap sensor always make sure that your paper runs through that when putting it in the cassette uh, you will see there's a little blue uh, screw point there that you can adjust your voltage on the on the sensor if needs be if you are having issues with the scale not picking up the gap um, we'll add that to another video at a later stage how turning that will indicate your your voltage is running through your sensor then the next sensor is your peel sensor to make sure that there's no labels that are stuck or uh, obscuring the label feed which is, sits at the bottom of the, the cutter uh, that's just for for the scale to make sure that you have peeled the label the last printed label and then the last sensor you have is your thermolet open and close sensor it's this little sensor over here that indicates when your thermal it is open or closed with the gap sensor uh, you can bypass it with a spec if you are experiencing issues with label peel sensor or if you do not use the take up reel in the cassette and you just want the labels to feed out the front that's also a sensor that you can disable for bulk packing uh, etc if needs be another thing to look out for is the two screws on the top of the thermal head when you do have uneven printing or faded printing uh, those are the two screws that you can check uh, what you do is to put the, your labels in while it's there just open the thermal head and close it you'll see your little thermal head goes down if you look from this part goes down onto your rubber roller so that if you have faded printing that means this is not lined up with your rubber roller at the bottom only thing you do is you take those two screws you just loosen them gently and move your thermal head forward and backwards and tighten them again until you get a nice print or a print that you are happy with okay after you've checked all your components on the inside and are happy with everything is working you can replace your top cover You'll see there's a little hole there for your earth screw. Please remember to do this or you will damage the scale. It will short and some of the components might even blow. Uh, just put that back in. And the next part is just plugging in your keyboard. 
you'll see there are guides on the connectors it just slides in like that and then it's just putting the cover over just check in the front by your thermal edge you'll see that's a little lever or not lever a guide there that might affect it but as soon as you're in and that is it all right so after you've put on your top cover again you can just flip the scale over to close it back up there are six positions where you need to insert, insert screws it's one there by the leg it's one here in the front then behind this little plate here there's one in that hole another one in this hole one by the foot at the back and another one at the foot at the back those are all your screws to tighten your top cover.